Hello, my name is Jack and I'm one of the teachers who works at Tuke School. Did you miss me? Well, I'm back. And today I'm going to be reading you the most beautiful story. It's called The Magic Paintbrush by Julia Donaldson. The Magic Paintbrush. Can you sign that? The Magic Paintbrush. In the story, you might like to do some signs. You could sign the main character's name. It's Shen. Can you do that? Shen. You might see some fish in the story. You could sign fish. There's also a tree. Tree. And a dragon. Can you sign that? Dragon. You even might spot the moon. Can you sign that? Moon. Let's read the story together. The Magic Paintbrush. Go and catch some shrimp, Shen. Go and catch some fish. Go and gather oysters to fill the empty dish. Shen sits on the seashore, a stick in her hand. She sits there drawing pictures, pictures in the sand. She draws a flower, a flying fish. She draws a boat at sea, a hen, a hare, a dancing dog, a weeping willow tree. Can you see Shen on the beach drawing? Hmm, I wonder what you could draw on the beach. Turn the page. The waves roll in and wash away the pictures in the sand. But on a rock there sits a man, a brush in his hand. He looks around, he calls to Shen. Come here, he whispers. Shh, hush. We don't want all the world to know about this magic brush. He slips the brush into her hand and tells her to be sure never to paint for wealthy folk, but only for the poor. So that's the man. And there he is giving the magic paintbrush to Shen. Did you catch some shrimp, Shen? Did you catch some fish? Did you gather oysters to fill the empty dish? No shrimps, no fish, no oysters. Shen laughs and runs inside. She paints a pot, then stands and waits until the paint has dried. So look, the pot is empty, but Shen's drawing a pot here. I wonder what's going to happen. Turn the page. The paint dries on the paper, the painting of the pot. It's not a painting anymore, but real and steaming hot. Oh, it's hot. The pot is full of shrimp, Shen. The pot is full of fish. The pot is full of oysters to fill the empty dish. The village people hear the news. Into the house they crash. The young and old all want to see Shen and her magic brush. You see, everyone's looking through the window and Shen's hugging her mum. She paints a melon for a boy, a ladder for a man, a basket for a woman, and for a girl, a fan. And soon the news spreads far and wide and people stand in queues for blankets, boats and buffaloes, for hats and coats and shoes. 
So everything Shen draws becomes real. And she gives it to all the people in the village. It's very kind, isn't it? The news spreads over fields of rice and over desert sands until, at last, inside Shen's house, the powerful emperor stands. I order you to paint a tree and make it very big. Instead of leaves, paint golden coins, a hundred on each twig. Shen shakes her head. Your Majesty, I promise to be sure never to paint for wealthy folk, but only for the poor. The Empress scowls and stamps his foot. He bellows to his men. Seize the magic paintbrush and seize that girl called Shen. Ooh, he's a very angry man, isn't he? Now Shen sits in a prison upon a cold stone floor. She waits there till the emperor opens the prison door. He holds the magic paintbrush. He orders, paint that tree. Paint me my tree of golden coins and then you shall go free. Shen takes the brush and bowing low says, gracious majesty, come back here in the morning and you shall have your tree. Mm. So there's Shen in the prison cell, and there she is bowing to the emperor, and she says that she will draw him his tree in the morning. What do you think will happen? Mm. That night the emperor lies in bed and dreams about his tree, while Shen is busy painting a horse and then a key. The key turns in the prison door and Shen stands free outside. She climbs onto the horse's back and swiftly starts to ride. So there's Shen riding the horse and look, there's the moon and there is the key. Very clever, isn't she? Where are my coins? The emperor shouts. Where is my golden tree? Where is the magic brush? He cries. Who let the girl go free? He climbs onto his fastest horse and rides with all his men over the fields and desert sands. They gallop after Shen. It's Shen! It's Shen! She's back again! The neighbours gather round. But Shen is painting silently while distant hoofbeats sound. She paints a mighty river, a river deep and wide. The emperor and all his men stop on the other side. The emperor scowls and stamps his foot. He shakes his fist at Shen. I'll swim across your river and so will all my men. He's very angry, isn't he? But Shen is busy painting, a beast with scales and claws. Its scarlet wings are open and flames curl from its jaws. My dragon needs a tail, says Shen, and then it will be real. Yes, then it will be roaring and ready for a meal. Now shall I paint that tail, she asks, or would you rather go? She dips her brush into the pot. The emperor cries out, no! He turns his horse and rides away. Away ride all his men. Shen takes the magic paintbrush and starts to paint again. There's the dragon, but he's not quite finished. She never made the tail. She paints a mound of golden rice and cakes like little moons and drums and flutes till all the streets ring out with merry tunes. The sun goes down, the moon comes out and shines as bright as day, while Shen and all the villagers dance the night away. Look, everyone's really happy now. They're having a party. Isn't that lovely? Oh, what a beautiful story. 
I wonder if you could draw some things at home and if they might come to life and be made real. Hmm. Look out for some activities that I'll be making related to this story. And I'll see you really soon. Bye.